everybody, Rob Cohey here talking to you about what's new in Inventor 2011. In this session, we're going to talk about the ease of use tools that we put into Inventor 2011. You're really going to like them. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is the dynamic input for sketching. Essentially, what we've done here is we've taken the familiar AutoCAD sketching environment and put it right into Inventor. Now, with Inventor 2011, dynamic input in the sketch environment provides a heads-up display to help you keep focus in the sketching area. So when dynamic input is on, the value input fields near the cursor display information that is dynamically updated as the cursor moves. So as you can see here, what I'm doing is I'm simply drawing a line, I'm typing in the dimension, I'm hitting the tab key, again, angular dimension, tab key, and then enter on through the command, and it executes those lines. It puts it at 18 millimeters and places the dimension at 128 degrees and places the dimension for me. No more sketching out your lines about where they need to be and then coming back after the fact and placing the dimensions. Place the dimensions while you're sketching. Heads up sketching, right? So let's go ahead and finish this sketch and move over into some uh, the next piece of easy use and that's direct part manipulation. Now you've been asking for it and now it's here. Notice that I'm doing all my extrude commands here without any dialog box. Everything is right at the cursor. No more searching around for commands. Very easy to use, easy to understand icons that are right at your cursor. Notice that I did an asymmetric extrude there. I have control in both directions. Now this particular part I'm going to do a symmetric extrude and go ahead and create my first solid. Now let's go into the properties here and add some physical properties to make this part look a little bit more like it's going to look like in the finished product. Now, as I rotate around, I'm going to go ahead and change my visual style. Look at all the new visual styles that we have in 2011 as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and select on the plane and notice that it brings, hey, there's a new sketch. There's no more right clicking, so you're not going to have a lot of context menus popping up anymore when it comes to direct manipulation. Most everything is right at the fingertips. I'm going to go ahead and extrude or project some cut edges here. So I can use those as reference edges. Grab my three-point rectangle, and just snap midpoint to midpoint. And even though I've already given it two, notice I can still type in, hit tab, hit enter, and again, all that heads up displaying, all that heads up sketching is 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 there no matter what I'm sketching. Line, arc, circle, uh, a uh, an angular dimension, it's all there. Now let's get this the uh, revolve dialog box out of the way. I don't need it. Let's go ahead and use all the glyphs that are right at the cursor. I'll go ahead and tell it full in this particular example. Rotate around. Make sure this is what I'm looking for here. Hit the checkbox, and I'm good to go. Now I've got another feature here that I'm going to use the X, XZ plane for. So again, click on it, click New Sketch, hit F7, do my project geometry, project that edge, draw the circle, and again, simply type in your distance, hit Tab, it places the dimension, finish the sketch, and let's go ahead and extrude that in both directions. Change this over to symmetric, and I don't have to type it in every time. I can just kind of drag it to where I want to go, and, and you can actually control the increments that it drags to in your tools document settings. Go to tools document settings, and you can control the increments there. I believe uh, by default it's set to a quarter millimeter same thing with with uh, with an inch part. It's set to um, a quarter of an inch or eighth inch or something like that. So make sure that you go into your tools document settings to adjust that. Now here I've even got access to the whole command through my direct manipulation tools. I just started a sketch. It automatically projected that center point. I click on the center point, and you'll notice that not only does extrude and revolve show up, but the whole option also comes up. So I'll click on it. There we go. Click on the whole and then add my tap tool in this particular instance. All right. So with the direct manipulation tools and the heads up sketching, dynamic input for sketching, I've been able to create a number of features here in very short order. Now what if I need to go back? Notice I just click on the surface and then a little little icon comes up for, well, hey, do you want to create a new sketch? Do you want to edit the existing sketch? I edited the existing sketch, made my change, finished the sketch, and now I can continue on with the rest of my my uh, my modeling here. Now what you're going to notice is that you're not searching around in the browser to edit something that exists. You'll notice throughout this entire demo that the only thing I go to the browser for is to access the origin planes. 
Now, let's go ahead and sketch out some stuff here. Notice I, I, I've got a new option in the line command. I right click and chose close to actually close out those that profile. Nice little handy tip. Add a couple of uh, constraints here. Some sketch geometry. Let's orient this this profile here. I'm probably getting a little more fancy um, than, I, than I need to in this demonstration, but hey, I, I'm having fun. So let's go ahead and create a dimension. Now, while I didn't get an opportunity to do this while I was doing the heads up, but you also have the ability to do direct parameter naming in the heads up sketching tools as well. So here, notice that I typed in offset equals two millimeters, and now I'm simply referencing that. You also have the ability to do direct parameter naming as well as reference parameters in the heads up sketching. So let's just go ahead and trim out some of the information we don't need here. Yeah, I put an extra dimension in. And let's just grab one more dimension, lock this thing down. I'm crazy about locking my sketches down, aren't I? And reference that offset one more time. Don't need that anymore. Finish the sketch and let's go ahead and again do some more direct modeling. So I'll go ahead and click on the profile. It automatically finds the profile. Now, when I grab the arrow and drag it in the opposite direction, notice that it automatically switches over to cut. You know, one of the things I was I was talking about with the with developers on this this new uh, heads up and dynamic input and direct manipulation tools was, all right, let me see which of these features you forgot to put into your tools. I couldn't find one yet, so uh, they kind of got me on that. So let's go ahead and grab an edge here. Notice that I can grab a hold of that fillet, push and pull. Looks a lot like fusion, doesn't it? So let's go ahead and zoom in here, grab another fillet, some more push and pull. Now this is actually solving the fillet while I'm pushing and pulling. So no more guessing as to whether or not your fillets are going to work. If you push or pull it to a point that it can't calculate it, it's not going to calculate that fillet. So it's no longer a guessing game. It's kind of like you know when some people are at the ATM machine, they're trying to get their money out, and they're like, hey, hey, you know it worked, uh, winner. Um, no longer like that with the fillet command. All right, let's grab a couple more fillets here, and this this particular fillet really shows off the new um, the new preview very very nicely. Remember how it used to be just kind of a a red arc? Well, now it's actually solving the fillet as you're going through those in real time, and gives you a real nice accurate preview as to, as to what's going to be shown or what's going to be calculated once you execute the command. Now I've been concentrating on fillets here. Let's uh, let's not ignore chamfer. Uh, chamfer works much the same way. Uh, only that you have access to, you'll notice right underneath the length there, I have access to, you know, angle uh, and distance, and here I'm just doing an e equidistant um, chamfer. All right. Now, I mentioned that I'm not going to go to the uh, to the browser for much of anything here, because what you can do is you can actually click on the features, and one of the options that comes up is your ability to edit the feature right there on the part. So rather than starting a new sketch, you simply say edit feature. Now I can go through and edit all my features without having to find them in the browser or choosing right click find in browser. Right there, right at the context. Now you're going to love this. Now one of the one of the things for new users to 3D is is the um, working with constraints and orientation and such. Now the assemble command is is even easier than O snaps if, if you're familiar with that from AutoCAD. I've got one command that allows me to determine insert, mate, flush tangent conditions. So here I'm just repeating the command, clicking on certain pieces of geometry, and it's automatically then determining, based on where I click on the geometry, what constraint it needs. So let's just go ahead and, and finish out assembling this. Call it the assemble command again, and just cycle through my selection set. Grab a mate axis to axis, like I've done there. You can see that I still have some a certain degrees of freedom. Again, I need another mate axis to axis, and I didn't predetermine that it needs to be a mate. The assemble command just figured out, based upon the geometry that I'm select selecting, relative to the position of my cursor on the geometry, it's doing a lot of work for me. So let's just go ahead and say one more mate face to face. And there you have it, folks. The direct manipulation tools are, 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 are fantastic. They're going to be wonderful time savers for you. I can't wait to see what you can do with them.